Welcome everyone to the final video in the Halloween Horror Marathon. I know it's after Halloween, but I've been busy. So, here is my top 10 greatest modern horror films after the period of 1968-1969, whenever horror started to make a change. If you haven't seen my classic video yet, then check it out here, and hopefully you enjoy the picks that I have in my top 10. So, let's start the countdown. Coming in at number 10 is Tetsuo the Iron Man. This film is certainly not for the lighthearted. Even watching this film in broad daylight warped me out of reality into this hellish surreal world that opens up in 67 minutes. The plot of the film is quite Cronenbergian and follows a metal fetishist who likes inserting scrap metal into his body. What a weirdo. Soon his body begins to turn into metal parts. Could this be the ultimate metaphor for man versus machine? The visuals of the film are wild and it is quite impressive to see all the gory effects and costume designs, especially towards the end of the film. Here is one scene that you definitely won't forget. And let's not forget about the crazy soundtrack. Overall, this film is an absolute mindfuck that challenges its fears to becoming confused and totally zoned out. Watch it if you dare. Number 9 is the classic A Nightmare on Elm Street. I was surprised how much I ended up loving this one when I sat down to watch it properly a few years ago and it's easily one of my favourite horror films for a terrific music score, great suspense and very good performances for a horror film of this type. Robert England's voice as Fred Krueger, not Freddy Krueger, is easily one of the best horror villain performances. You don't fall I always love the fact that it's also Johnny Depp's first movie appearance in a pretty damn decent role. Too bad he had to die. Elm Street is an essential horror film from the 80s. Number 8 is A Razorhead. This is another nightmarish film from surreal director David Lynch. It is a hellish look at the responsibilities and roles of fatherhood and relationships which Lynch has said is a reflection of his own life at the time in his fear of being a father. The film had taken five years to make and on such a low budget it is fascinating to think the film took so long to make but shows true dedication to filmmaking. The black and white visuals are gritty and the lighting is low key fitting to this confusing and out of body experience. Watch this one late at night to heighten the involvement. I think we should get together. Ginger Snaps. This is the newest addition to my favourites and it really is a surprise. Two teenage girls, one 15 and one 16, are not your ordinary teenagers. They are dark, very gothic and very pessimistic of the world. Making Daria and Jane and MTV Daria look very joyful. One begins to go through changes in her body as she comes of age. Meanwhile, they also have an encounter with a wild beast. The beast bites one of the girls, and the film looks at how this changes her body and the sisters' relationship with one another. And the sisters' relationship with one another. The film was written by a woman, and respectively so. We look at themes of sisterhood, family, and female adolescence, which is a theme less explored in cinema compared to male adolescence, and I don't think it could have been penned by a male. Many call the film a metaphor for female puberty, which is definitely very evident. Puberty is represented as an uncontrollable force that takes over your body. The style of the film feels like a combination of John Hughes and David Cronenberg, body horror, making it one of the most surprising horror films of the 2000s. This is a very confusing time for your sister. Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd is a real personal favourite of mine, also for my love of musicals. More thriller than horror, Sweeney Todd is a story about a barber who was thrown out of his country, separated from his wife and children, returning to find that they are dead many years later. He opens up shop again, slowly building his plan to get revenge on the person responsible. The side romance in the film is a little weak, but the brilliant songs, dark macabre style and humour, and Grey Burton-esque colour palette, and Johnny Depp of course, carry the film extremely well. Tim Burton has a good range of films despite the recent quality decline, and this film proves that. If you can appreciate it, Sweeney Todd is a very fun and dark thriller. Number 5 is Jaws. There is debate whether to call this one a horror film, and I think it fits the bill all too well. While there is little gore or elements of the genre, you're definitely put in suspense for the shark representing anything the viewer wants it to be. A real symbol of fear. 
Steven Spielberg is still one of Hollywood's hottest directors, and with blockbusters like Jaws under his belt, he will not be forgotten. Jaws terrified audiences, and it even made me think twice about swimming in the ocean. Jaws is another essential film to watch, showing how to make a horror film outside the usual generic tropes. One word. Hobbling. One actress. Kathy Bates. Late to the party, I loved every single minute of it. Rarely does a film hold my attention so well, keeping me tense and in suspense. Not to mention wanting poor old James Caan to get out of his situation. Credit must also go to Stephen King for paying such a great novel. Misery is a real tense suspense movie with a very, very chilling performance from Kathy Bates. Highly recommend this one. Number three is, of course, John Carpenter's Halloween. The story of an escaped psychopath works effectively in scaring its audience because it is something that can exist in this world. Ghoulish stories of zombies, vampires and werewolves are frightening, but imagine being stalked and attacked by a mysterious figure in a white mask. Although the film loses some of its potency nowadays to scare, I still found it to be more suspenseful and scary than most other horror films. That is thanks to the great direction and wonderful performance from the very young Jimmy Lee Curtis. Halloween is another horror classic that needs to be seen. Halloween. And my number two favourite is going to have to be David Cronenberg's remake of the 50s sci-fi film, The Fly. Watching this at 15, it had a profound effect on me. It freaked me out and I absolutely loved it. Gina Davis, Jeff Goldblum, carry the weight of the film very well. Not to mention the great makeup effects and Cronenberg's careful direction. A scientist is working on a project of teleportation, the king's travelling forever. However, things begin to go wrong. Meanwhile, his new girlfriend grows anxious. As a remake of the classic 50s film, this is one of the greatest remakes ever made, which in my opinion actually surpasses the original. Now, there are few films that can say that. It gives more focus to the theme of the dangers of science and coming out in the 80s it was able to be more explicit in showing the whole process rather than just a large fly head. It is tense, thrilling and another mindfuck from the great director David Cronenberg. No. Which is the nature of Stanley Kubrick's films. As the recent documentary Room 237 shows, the film is packed with allegory, metaphor and themes that people still debate today. In a mainstream sense, the film can be seen as a story of a man with writer's block who simply goes insane from the isolation from the world and frustration. On the other hand, we have ideas of the Apollo landing being referred to, and even Indian heritage. With every rewatch of this film, you will find yourself thinking of it differently, which is natural, of course, of rewatching anything. However, with The Shining, you are at a constant challenge with what you see. But the film doesn't cease to be thrilling, horrifying, suspenseful, and tense. Jack Nicholson uses his persona in this role, showing just how psychopathic he can be. Wendy, stay away! Darling, light of my life. I'm not gonna hurt you. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. The Shining is easily one of the greatest movies ever made that I will watch again and again for the rest of my life. If you haven't seen The Shining yet, I strongly suggest you do it right now. Thanks for joining me everyone in my top 10 modern horror greats and I hope you enjoy the video and some of your favourites popped up. I want to ask also, what are some of your favourites? Just let me know below and if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button and if you feel like it, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos on movies and be sure to check out my other classic horror top 10 list. And that's it really everyone, hope you enjoyed the marathon, I hope I can continue making more uploads and until next time, see you then.